Hi everyone, uh, welcome to another episode of Startup Talks. Uh, today we are joined by Isa Agabi. Uh, he's the founder and managing partner at Access Bridge Ventures. He's also uh, the board member at various um, uh, ventures uh, which uh, they have funded and previously been with the International Finance Corporation and he is also the founding member at Middle East Venture Association. So Isa, thank you very much for coming on the show. How are you doing? I'm doing great. That's, Thanks for having me. That's lovely. So uh, Isa, uh, let's uh, start with the, the fund that is centered around uh, MENA and Pakistan. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I know that you guys have made investments uh, in the region uh, is as far back as uh, just a couple of months back. What about Pakistan? How, how do you see for see the ecosystem in Pakistan evolving? So, so we just as background, we launched Access Bridge in January mm -hmm. 2021. So this year, mm -hmm. and we've been operational since since then, we've done around six investments. Mm -hmm. uh, those investments happen to be scattered across MENA without the P. Uh, we call it meaningfully from our perspective. Yeah. Uh, so we have not done anything yet in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. But if you take a step back, uh, the pipeline that we've been getting across the region has been very, very healthy. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll get to that at some point during our conversation. So we've sourced over 950 applications of funding mm -hmm. to access Bridge since January. Mm -hmm. And I would say probably a good 20% plus have come from Pakistan because it's a region we focus on. Mm -hmm. And just to give you like some statistics, because that helps base the context about what we think about Pakistan and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say of those uh, 950, mm -hmm. 50 went to IC. Mm -hmm. And when I say went to IC, this our process is we have what we call a first look. This is basically, uh, we screen our pipeline. Mm -hmm. uh, from that screening, uh, we have a shortlist. That shortlist gets talked to within half an hour conversation similar to this. Mm -hmm. And based on that, the ones that go through to the IC based on the criteria we invest in, uh, get a two to three pager summary of what we like, what we don't, the deck attached to it, and so on and so forth. Of those 50, I would say, again, maybe 10 to 20% have come from the Pakistani market. So we do have healthy deal flow. There are conversations taking with it internally, but we have not pulled the trigger uh, on any transactions just yet for a number of reasons we can get into. But we're very excited about the market. The fundamentals of the overall ecosystem are spectacular. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been uh, I've spent a lot of time, as we discussed earlier, in Pakistan. You know, I used to uh, travel to Pakistan, specifically Lahore and Karachi, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, two, three times a year for a good five years before COVID hit. Mm -hmm. uh, build good relationships. We have uh, people we like to work with. I've invested in funds at IFC there. We've invested in startups. We've looked at startups. But with Access Bridge, yet, uh, at this point in time, we haven't done anything yet. To mm -hmm. be completely like you said, uh, uh, you, you mentioned various reasons that may be holding you back. Uh, is it... Uh... Uh, things related to regulation or uh, the startup structure or uh, the product uh, uh, that you might be, they might be reaching out to you for? Uh, what are I the think, reasons? Yeah, two buckets, I would, well, a number of buckets rather. <laughs> I think regulation is a very important one, right? Ability for us as non local Pakistanis mm -hmm. uh, to invest in Pakistan mm -hmm. is not difficult. People will take money, startups will take money, we can get on a cap table. The problem for us is getting our money out eventually as we exit and perhaps get dividends. Unlikely, obviously, to get dividends anytime soon with startups, especially at the stage we invest in. So that becomes a bit of a challenge. But I think that challenge, we're working on resolving that. And as we advance discussions with startups, we will engage with more lawyers to be able to do that. I've done it before. I understand what needs to be done. But unfortunately, yes, we do need top calls abroad that own the local opcos, exits will happen to happen abroad. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that relationship is covered in a legal uh, uh, and clean uh, structure. But yes, tough. I would like not to do that. It saves me time and money and effort. But unfortunately, 
uh, due to the restrictions and how things are generally done, uh, it, it's something that we need to think about. It's not something I need to think about in the region because I'm familiar with the legal infrastructure and how things work. Uh, and I've done, you know, probably 50 deals here in this part of the world, okay. uh, Middle East specifically. It's, it's a bit of a different playground for us. Okay. Uh, so that's one aspect of it. I would say the other aspect of it, if you take a step back and, and understand the DNA of our fund, unlike others, uh, and I don't like to compare myself to others, but how we function, we're an early stage investor. Uh, when I say early stage, we invest predominantly at pre series A. Uh, and most likely with the current investment climate and the liquidity out there, which Pakistan has been blessed with <laughs> over the past even six months to a year, even two years, yeah. uh, 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 we are now doing probably seed more so than anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, and why? Because as a small fund, unlike larger funds, uh, our returns are predominantly driven to understand the, the, the ethos and, the, and how we think. Okay. It's predominantly driven by our first check. Mm -hmm. So our first check drives our returns. And that's generally the case with most funds. But larger funds have a lot more dry powder, right? So if they don't get a good allocation or don't get the right check at the beginning of the value chain, they can quadruple down. So they can put 100K or pay to play rather. We can't do that. Our returns are predominantly driven by A, coming in early at a good price point, and then supporting, and we will double down and triple down uh, uh, as needed. Our ability to continue to follow on fund over the next period, uh, you know, next three, four rounds, is unlikely. Next round, for sure. The one after that, we start opening up to our stakeholders or LPs, we can get you the money, but as a fund, that won't come directly from us, it comes from our stakeholders. A, so that's one thing, data point to think about. And that goes, and I'll come to why that is irrelevant to why we haven't invested or the challenges rather. Mm -hmm. The second data point is the value add that we bring. Mm -hmm. We only invest in sectors and subsectors we can drive value to. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe, especially at the early parts of the value chain, mm -hmm. as a fund, for the first 12 to 18 months, the question I ask myself, how can I help you grow that 10 to 15x? What do I need to do as a fund? And we collectively have that conversation with entrepreneurs that can drive that value. That value add isn't, I would say, in certain areas as strong as it is in Saudi or the UAE or Jordan and so on, but it's there. So take that in mind and you take a step back and look at what we've gotten. So we've taken deals through the IC from that first look to the actual IM and DD, and we've done DD. And I'll tell you, some of the reasons that we haven't pulled the trigger or invested in any companies are, one, in, in a, you know, I say an outlier case, uh, we were at term sheet and about to sign with the term sheet with a, with, a, with a certain party. And after due diligence and we're all happy, we're gonna come in, although risky, but needed a lot of help and we can add value there. Uh, one of the co-investors, because we like to collaborate and get good people who can add value alongside us, like this company so much, uh, decided they want to buy it out. So there's a very positive reason for the startup, less so for us, because it would have been nice if they did that. <laughs> Six months down the line, we would have had an exit there. So that's a positive reason. The others revolve around the hype and the excitement that exists right now in Pakistan. So in certain cases, it's a mismatch of... Uh, Evaluation versus fundamentals of the business. Mm -hmm. So where the business at and what they're looking for uh, can be justifiable in a lot of entrepreneurs' minds, and I can understand the logic behind it. But for us, as a you know, first, uh, as a seed investor, you know, when someone comes and asks for valuations north of fifteen million dollars at a seed transaction, mm -hmm. with not much happening there, doesn't make sense for us. Again, it may make sense for a lot of other people, but generally speaking. We like to have fundamentals meet and be very realistic when it comes to the price point you come in at. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and again, people are willing to take exceptions, so are we. But if it's a risky investment and still a lot of question marks, I need to be rewarded for a lower price point because of that risk I'm taking. And that, you know, sometimes there is mismatch there. I would say the second would be uh, uh, a, mis oh, a lack of allocation. So we like the deal, we want to come in, Okay. Uh, other people like it, it becomes oversubscribed. Uh, 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 the allocation that a fund like us gets at that price point doesn't make sense. So, you know, because of the stage that we invest in, and I want a, you know, a good equity base in the business. Uh, and before, you know, before COVID, I would say the normal equity base for a seed is 10 to 15 for someone like us. Okay. Uh, it's now a lot less. 
Or again, when I get allocated a hundred thousand dollar check at a certain price point, it doesn't make sense. I'm not going to have enough skin in the game to help drive that value add and make my returns as a fund. So I think with these two in mind, we've managed, we've lost like four, uh, three to four deals that we could have done uh, in, in the market. So to be completely transparent, that maybe four or five months ago made us shy away mm -hmm. from being as active as we would like to in Pakistan and thus executed six deals uh, within that period in the MENA region and one abroad and probably will close another transaction or two over the coming months, bringing us to eight deals this year. The positive news, we have an alignment with someone right now. We are in the midst of the DD process in Pakistan mm -hmm. and that could be our first deal in that market. I don't know if that answers your question, but I just wanted to give uh, you and the people listening an idea of how we think. So it's really... Uh, managing how much we invest and the price point and finding a delta there. The price point is not the key driver, but it becomes one if it's there's a massive disconnect within the norms and the ranges that you look at. But in certain cases, when you agree on that, the deal is so overhyped or oversubscribed, <laughs> that comes from rather getting enough allocation. You know, again, it may work for a larger funds. So if you're a hundred million dollar fund, that's not a big problem. For you. As a small 25 to a 30 million dollar fund, because we're still fundraising, uh, as most funds do, it becomes a better question. You've absolutely answered my question. The, uh, the target behind uh, the conversation is actually to have your perspective on uh, the regional uh, ecosystem, how it is developing, and uh, also in comparison to Pakistan, what would be your thoughts on, on Pakistan too? Because We've yeah. had uh, other uh, venture capital uh, uh, funds as well on the platform. Like uh, uh, a couple of weeks weeks back, we had uh, Chad Fox from Fox Ventures. Then we had uh, 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 William Baobin from SOSV. So every I totally understand that for any investment company or a venture fund, they have their uh, everybody has their preset uh, protocols to follow and uh, uh, everybody ha has their own playbook to uh, go around and work on. That's totally understandable. Now, uh, y you've already told me that you m may be, uh, you are in the process of and you may be in the next uh, couple of months, maybe uh, coming to an arrangement with the uh, with a startup you said or with somebody who's associated yeah. okay that's great then and uh, now moving on uh, taking this conversation further uh, isa which uh, segments or which sectors are most uh, interesting to access bridge i think before we jump into that yeah because a lot of people reading this will probably be thinking that, and I know people will write a comment about this, is, you know, everything I said is irrelevant if this is a billion dollar business, yeah. right? Yeah. Because price point is not relevant. I see that, but the question is how long do you need to wait to get to that level? How many real billion plus businesses are we going to get from markets? Mm -hmm. Because if you look at statistically at uh, emerging markets, a lot of the VC wins are mid to high level wins as opposed to that one hit wonder. Mm -hmm. uh, so you also need to think about that and how that pans out in your overall proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, just some food for thought. So in terms of sector, so I go back to the point that we invest in areas we understand. The, and I think for Pakistan right now, two years ago, it was a blank canvas. There wasn't much, right? You had mean, you had what, pack wheels, uh, 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 you had uh, a Bikea just launching, you know, just really five to 10 startups up the start of their operation. Now, I think across the value chain, you're seeing everyone targeting the different subsectors. Mm -hmm. So for us, I would say there are a couple of areas that we excel in and as startups who we invest in can drive a lot of value add know-how, either it be us as partners, as investors, uh, our operational experience, because we do have a lot of operational experience across the group that we're with. Mm -hmm. 
that we operate under. So we have a sister fund in the PE space mm-hmm. and it's very, very strong operationally, uh, Cedar Bridge, but uh, as well as a wider stakeholder network. So the advisors that we have, some of our investors, high net worth individuals who are C-level in key companies and key sectors. So we tried to build that thesis around what we can drive value to. Mm-hmm. And right now that includes a few sub-segments of the value chain, uh, such as, uh, uh, I would say health tech and edutech are very important for us. Mm-hmm. And we've already done three out of the six deals that we've done fall within that remit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say uh, fintech, mm-hmm. uh, but take that with a grain of salt. We, uh, certain subsects of fintech interest us more than others. What they are, honestly, that changes based on <laughs> what we're seeing in trends out there and the patterns that we're seeing in global and emerging markets. Uh, but really uh, uh, businesses that are not very capital intensive, maybe the pipes behind FinTech, uh, mm-hmm. we can do B2C and we're happy to do B2C, but if that works, for example, remittance is not something we've touched, especially in MENA. Uh, a, I think as the fund launched, we were a bit late to the game because we didn't launch in launch in January. B, there's probably five or six that are doing remittance across GCC, MENA too. Uh, uh, some parts of Asia, mm-hmm. and I say two of or three of them are spectacular entrepreneurs. So who's going to win? Uh, uh, we're not comfortable making that bet. But fintech is definitely a sector we look at. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you take a look, one of our six investments, Casbana, uh, falls within that remit. It's on our website. If anyone's interested. Uh, the other one, I would say e-commerce enablers. So I think there is a push for digitization. Obviously, we need e-commerce. So what are the uh, the the what companies help serve that value chain. Uh, so for example, we did the warehousing on demand platform uh, in Egypt that fits within that bucket. And the last one is a wide one on purpose. Anything that helps SMEs retail digitize or cut costs down. So under that bucket falls marketplaces, SaaS solutions, enterprise tech, you name it. Dawatech as an example is a company we did uh, falls within both that last bucket, but the first one as it focuses on the pharma space. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, uh, Pakistan, obviously, uh, you know, uh, you've already said that uh, there is a bit of a hype, uh, but uh, over here, we are very bullish uh, on that hype, actually, right? Uh, yeah. Why is that? Because uh, uh, we've already seen an acquisition, uh, two acquisitions that is. Uh, one is uh, in the logistics space uh, uh, by Trucker, which acquired Truckshare in Pakistan. And uh, the other one is in the EdTech space uh, where EdMetrics was acquired by uh, Abwab, right? And uh, uh, there are uh, some uh, fintech companies uh, which r- Uh, Two of them actually only launched this year and uh, one uh, raised uh, a bridge investment of $20 million was announced yesterday and was valued at $40 million and is looking to expand into UAE in the regional, the smaller countries like Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. Now, uh, the negotiations that you are in obviously uh, it's not possible for you to disclose uh, <laughs> and make preemptive preemptive announcements but which sector is that uh, i believe that would be possible for you to talk on which sector is that yeah. uh, uh, startup in i think i mean i don't i don't like the word hype yeah. i think there's excitement <laughs> FOMO. FOMO. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and I think it's more of like there's a lot of money globally, there's a lot of liquidity globally, and it's being funneled into markets that weren't as attractive, mm-hmm. but markets that truly need it and have true value and potential up, upside. In. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think uh, uh, that's one point to make. Um, I lost my chain of thought. What was the question again? <laughs> the, the sector that you are. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah, you mentioned Trucker. So I was on the board of Trucker. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I, mean, I did that, that deal at IFC uh, and supported them with a few rounds. So I'm very familiar with what happened there. Mm-hmm. And that's a positive uh, ecosystem uh, 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 you know, enabling mm-hmm. movement. Mm-hmm. But again, if you take a look at those both two exits, it goes back to the point that I made 
okay. mid to strong level wins, right? In terms of the sectors that we're looking at, I think I would say let's not say the one we're in DD because there's like probably three that are uh, one in DD and two in advanced discussions or reviews. Mm -hmm. I would say one is in fintech, another one in market enabling, so B two B marketplaces of some sort with a very interesting niche, and uh, and the last one is in edtech. Mm -hmm. Okay, you mentioned in the beginning, uh, Isa, that. Uh one of the most uh, the biggest pain point that is is mostly related to regulation and uh, repatriation of investment invested money or profits right that yeah. uh, has been actually holding uh, excess bridge ventures from investing in Pakistan what about cases like where there is a cross pollination like the examples uh, I just quoted you uh, through Trucker and Abwab and Kareem yeah. and all those examples. And uh, because of all the uh, the excitement that you said, right, there is bound to be a lot of cross-pollination because a lot of uh, uh, startups uh, in the UAE, because UAE, uh, the MENA region is actually uh, if you look at the dynamics, it's geographically distributed. The population is very much distributed. But if you come into Pakistan, you have access to all of a sudden 220 million people. So uh, uh, in such cases, uh, would uh, Access Bridge be uh, uh, more active in such scenarios where there is cross-pollination? I think to answer your question, end of the day, we're in the business of, you know, supporting entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and all making you know uh, 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 some returns across the value chain mm -hmm. uh, across you know the process so with that in mind of course right and i think you hit the nail on the head so amina stick pakistan aside is a very difficult market you have you know, i can't remember what the exact number is but what like 20 30 company countries uh, 23 if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. uh, 23 countries uh, 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 that are operating in their own different silos, different buckets. Uh, for you to succeed as a startup, you need to at least be very successful in two to three of them. Uh, so it's very tough. And right, that, that's why a lot of international company trade sales happen because they want to shortcut the market. Mm -hmm. Pakistan's more homogeneous, right? You have 200 million plus people all within a certain demographic. So yes, it makes sense for local startups to come and access and, 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 and focus on the Pakistani market. Uh, and you know what shocks me sometimes? A lot of startups within Pakistan looking abroad already. I'm like, who are the market that you're in? It's such a large market. And again, I'm generalizing. Yeah. It's not really a, a, a good thing to do. But that's uh, that's uh, just, just, so yes is the answer to your question. Okay. And uh, in your opinion, what do you think uh, because you've been to Pakistan quite a few times uh, before the pandemic with uh, when you were with IFC, uh, you've studied the market very closely what do you think is uh, actually lacking within the infrastructure of the ecosystem in Pakistan and uh, in your opinion uh, what steps do you think need to be taken uh, so I don't think lacking so I think the market is still early days, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you know as time progresses, maturity will come into play. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing nowadays in Mina, as an example, because it's a good comparable, is the DNA of the entrepreneurs over the past few years has changed drastically. Why? These are entrepreneurs who've worked for high growth startups, either it be large ones, a la Karim and so on, or mid-level to fast growing ones, uh, 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 and have left to launch their own businesses. Uh, uh, diaspora, who's worked internationally in amazing and, and fast-growing businesses, who've moved back to the local market to be able uh, to reflect that. People from the industry who understand that industry very well and looking to digitize that. So really, the DNA of entrepreneurs has matured a lot. I think we're seeing that maturity very quickly coming to Pakistan. So I think those trial and errors and so on. I think as local fund ecosystem emerges, we have, I think we have in Pakistan, a number of amazing people with VCs who are investing locally. Uh, you know, the Samaya cars or uh, Gobi, uh, Fatima, uh, Indus, uh, uh, just to name a few. 
but I think we need a lot more. Mm-hmm. You need people touching across the different parts of the value chain. So the, the seeds focus, early series A, series B, because what we're seeing, a lot of the activity right now, it's strictly at the beginning of the value chain. Mm-hmm. Obviously, a lot will die and slowly the funnel starts decreasing, but uh, uh, you don't want to lose that momentum as that funnel decreases. Right now, there's a lot of liquidity globally, so it's not going to be as big of a problem, but that will change in a couple of years' time. So what happens then? You need the local ecosystem and the neighbors to be able to pounce and come in and support that. So I think that's one aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, from a legal infrastructure and ability to do business, I think if you are locally based as a SARC, it's not very difficult. You can manage and figure your things all out. As you expand uh, and manage that process, that becomes a bit of a challenge, not just from an investment perspective, but as a startup, how do you set up different hubs across the regions, uh, markets, and vice versa? Mm-hmm. This is just high level thoughts, uh, but like if you take a look at certain subsectors, a lot more mature than others. So fintech in Pakistan, significantly more mature and efficient than MENA, mm-hmm. hands down. But when you look at these marketplaces, uh, I think comparable level, but again, different subsectors have different types of different maturity, uh, but definitely an interesting market. And I think fundamentally what took other emerging markets 10 to 15 years to get to, Pakistan is doing in a fraction of that time because of you know, technology adoptions on the rise, availability of capital, mm-hmm. uh, and incentive schemes and programs to push entrepreneurs to become more entrepreneurial mm-hmm. uh, and so on and so forth. I, I absolutely agree with you here that uh, right now the value chain is uh, for early and seed stages because uh, everything is just starting off. Right, people uh, locally, people might think uh, uh, that uh, Pakistan is uh, out of its uh, nascent stages, but uh, personally, I don't think that's the case. It's still uh, um, in the process of popping its head out. Maybe by mid next year, we'll see that yes, it is uh, uh, more of a mature market, and we start seeing more of series A's and B's and. Uh, maybe 2023 we'll see some C's and D's as well right but of course uh, some of them uh, will die out there may be mergers and acquisitions and all those kinds of things now uh, Issa uh, you said the inquiries that you have are 20% of them have been from Pakistan right rough right what uh, what would be the message that you may have for those people trying to reach out to you, those founders, because this is uh, actually very important because uh, some of them, uh, most of them, they don't uh, uh, realize uh, the uh, their applications, they don't reach any realization, right? So what yeah. would be the... So I think what we try to be different, and this is based on what I've gone through through my career and my life mm-hmm. is we are responsive. Mm-hmm. Well, if you apply to us, mm-hmm. sometimes it takes longer than other uh, usual and what we'd like because you know when we launched, you know, getting 950 since January, we need them, uh, you know, a team to be able to do it. And it was just two us parts, two partners, and now we're growing that team. Mm-hmm. You will get a response from us. If you apply to our website, although uh, most deals end up not being done through website. But you will, we will review it. The deal that right, one of the deals that we're doing right now came from our website, as an example, mm-hmm. non Pakistani, but nevertheless. So apply to our website. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, if you have, uh, if you've, uh, uh, if there is someone, a common link between us mm-hmm. that usually has uh, the best way, and that's the normal across the VC ecosystem to get uh, uh, forward or get, you know, your, your, us to review it a lot quicker. But generally speaking, we make it a point to review every application we get, mm-hmm. and you will get a response. A response. We have sent over 950 emails out. Mm-hmm. Yes, no calls, whatever it is. So we try to make sure everyone is talked to and reviewed, and this, you know we have a touch point with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's very important for us to do. Uh, so if you are interested, there are many ways to apply for us. You know, uh, either it be someone who knows us directly to us on our website. Uh, at an event perhaps of some sort uh, you just find a way if you're a good entrepreneur you'll find a way in uh, we are accessible uh, so yeah just let us know 
you know, eventually as we close, we may have even a local resource on the ground because also one of the challenges I didn't talk about is not being on the ground as a non-local fund. Mm -hmm. You know, best startups are sourced locally, right? And we source digitally. It works. We will get pipeline. We've seen a lot of, most of the deals out there, but uh, it's the ability to execute when you're on the ground mm -hmm. and have ability to do DD is a lot higher. Mm -hmm. So right now, one of the conditions we have is because we're not on the ground and travel restrictions between uh, anywhere in the Middle East to Pakistan, a bit challenging, mm -hmm. uh, we tend to ask for a local co-lead or lead. Mm -hmm. So we're happy to lead, uh, rather co-lead in Pakistan, uh, but that helps us mitigate some of our risks. Someone who can go validate everything on the ground because you can do most of this virtually and it will work, but it takes a bit longer than if you have someone on the ground to help you. Uh, so right now we, we work with local partners, most of the VC funds locally, mm -hmm. who are the ones that like to share and, and, and collaborate. Mm -hmm. And uh, in certain cases, we did it on our own, mm -hmm. but uh, definitely something we like, we prefer. Mm -hmm. Still, we have a more concrete on the ground presence, which will happen in the distant future, in the near future. Right? Hopefully. No, of course, like uh, uh, like we've recommended people to uh, VCs as well, people who, because a lot of people, I, I do a bit of mentoring myself, right? And a lot of people, they uh, come out and reach out. So uh, I would be happy to connect with people to you as well, right? There's no, like, once again, there's no charge or fee or anything like that. It's just a support thing. Now, uh, Issa, last question. Uh, since it's a small fund uh, and you guys concentrate on early stages, what are the what kind of in, uh, investment sizes or ticket sizes, so to say, that uh, founders may be looking at? I think on average, half a million when we first come in has been the norm mm -hmm. uh, last period. Right. You can go below. You can go above, but that's usually the sweet spot mm -hmm. for the first. Okay. Again, if you're very, very expensive and you want to come in at that price, then that may need to go up to compensate, but that's usually how it works. Yeah, of course, there's a, a cooperation between VCs and uh, it doesn't stick to yeah. that. And uh, the actual size ends up being much bigger than that. And uh, the things that you have seen among those 950 applications, right? That you would not want founders to be making those mistakes while applying to you. Yeah. So again, take the 950 with a grain of salt, right? 60, 70% don't meet our criteria. Mm -hmm. So they get killed immediately. So I think do your homework, right? Mm -hmm. Go to our website. It's not a very long one. It'll tell you the subsectors we look at, the geographies we looked at, the stages we look at. If you're a series B company, don't waste your time. <laughs> We're an early stage seed company. So common sense really is what I would say. Uh, so just do your homework, understand who we are, what we've invested in, the, fee, the sectors we look at. And if you feel that we fit mm -hmm. and we can add value to you and vice versa, uh, do that. Two, don't oversell, don't misrepresent. You know, be honest about where you are, the traction that you have, uh, and the fundamentals of your business. Understand your business and be number one, in, or aspire to be number one in a certain subsect of what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, people come to you with, you know, jack of all trades type of businesses. I want to do this, this, and that. For us at Seed, you need to succeed and, and, and be number one or two, uh, or number one in one or two things, right? Mm -hmm. You can't be number one in a hundred things. Yeah. Uh, so really understand the fundamentals of your business, what you're trying to do, what you need this round for, uh, and how you're looking to scale. Mm -hmm. uh, don't come to investors and tell them you have a week to make a decision and invest or not. Mm -hmm. uh, processes take time, especially for people who do our homework. Uh, we tend to do our homework. We will go through it easy regardless of the stage that you're in. Mm -hmm. uh, so keep that in mind. We're quick. You know, we've turned deals in two to three weeks, which I think is relatively quick. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and we've had deals that have taken us two months to close. But we try to be as quick as possible, but within reason. So be, be realistic. Uh, and the last one is uh, what, you know, makes it shy away sometimes. If you come to us with a deal and we like it, but you start playing us against others. 
with mm-hmm. investing with with, uh, uh, with other deals to drive price, get more than one VC. That's fine. Mm-hmm. We we collaborate. Just be honest about what it is you need and what you want to achieve, and we can work together on getting that done. Okay. Now oh, we are almost uh, towards the uh, end of time, Isa. The last thing that I really want to touch on is the post that uh, uh, you made uh, some time back, where I reached to you on about yeah. about a de- the gap between debt and uh, and capital. What is that all about? What's going on? What's the thought process yeah. behind that? So, so it really depends the sector and the subsector. In, in more mature markets, uh, what you notice is there is a roster of funding available for entrepreneurs. Forget the typical equity that we're all used to. Debt is also a big part of it. So either it be venture debt, factoring platforms, uh, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. That is very difficult in this part of the world. You know, banks are not incentivized to take risk in this part of the world. Yeah. Uh, some They are changing in certain countries. We've seen a positive uh, movement in Egypt, more so than anywhere else, let's say. But generally speaking, banks are not geared uh, to that. So you have very private sector institutions and funds opening up platforms to help service that. You know, we heard a few funds here in MENA that have launched debt platforms or venture debt platforms. So I think that helps companies grow because funding equity for debt is a very big problem. That usually goes for either be fintech businesses that take that money and we lend it out, B, uh, companies with heavy capex or working capital requirements that need to process that. For example, you mentioned the trucker acquisition, that space globally is biggest driver of growth is matching you know, paying the driver up front while you wait 30 to 60 days to collect from your suppliers, right? So how do you fund that through debt as opposed to expensive equity is a big problem. And I don't see that yet in this part of the world. It's not an easy place to sell and you need a good sizable fund to be able to do it. But, the, you know, healthy returns can be made. Uh, 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 some crowdfunding platforms have tried to do that. Have seen, I mean, haven't seen that succeed just yet. Mm-hmm. But yeah, debt financing doesn't exist properly in this part of the world. And the ones that do are not sizable enough mm-hmm. uh, uh, or haven't launched properly yet uh, for that to make a proper dent in the market. But again, you need 10, 15 funds that do debt mm-hmm. across the wider region to be able to make this a viable play. Uh, not something we've gotten into mm-hmm. uh, because that's not my forte, mm-hmm. but uh, let's see what happens in the future. So is this an indication of that there may be some plans? We just launched fund one. We still have a long time. <laughs> so not anytime soon, I'll tell you that. Uh, All right. We will be willing to support our companies somehow if they need it. Mm-hmm. Uh, for short term, uh, 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 anyways, most of what we do at the beginning of the value chain, beginning of their life rather, is convertible debt in a way, uh, or convertible notes, whatever you want to call them, kisses, safes. Uh, 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 so it is that in a way, but this is quasi equity right? as opposed to pure debt. Fact, right? All right, you said. Thank you very much for your for those thoughts of yours. Thank you very much for being on Startup Talks. And uh, a shout out to everybody who's watching this. If you are looking to raise funds through Access Bridge, uh, you can reach out to Isa directly or you can reach out to me and be happy to connect you through to them. All right, Isa. Thank you, for your thank you very much. Thank it was a pleasure. Hopefully, we'll do it again sometime. Inshallah. Perfect. Cheers. Have a good day. You too. Allah Hafiz.